All right, I know I said there wasn't going to be a video this week, but I ended up doing a stream this week that was about, we, we went into a tangent about color correction and how to make your webcam pop. And it was a good 15 minute section and I wanted to share it on YouTube. I, don't, I didn't have time to make it into like the usual well-produced video that I, I usually do on this channel, but I wanted to share it with you guys regardless. So I hope you enjoy. Today, I'm going to show you how to go from this to this in DaVinci Resolve. Yee. And then, I'm gonna show this on stream, because I don't, I don't show this a lot on stream, and judging by that poll, nobody wants to pay for color science, which I think is a travesty, because A, it would make me money, and B, lots of people need it. <laughs> it's a lot of crappy looking streams out there, I'm sorry. And like, honestly, you can make your webcam look better in like 15 minutes. So this is without any of the color science on. And this is with the color science on. Notice how the the, the skin tones seem more natural. The, the color in the background is corrected. My hair is the strawberry blonde that it actually is. And the way that I color correct this, because you can't trust monitors, but um, I'll take a picture with my phone, import it into Resolve, and check the scopes then, because the iPhone has a really good neutral camera. Color science is good. Yeah, but most people don't see the value in it, unfortunately. So, like... Alright, so, like, basic color science, right? That was the wrong transition, but... So, first thing you do, you should already do this in your camera, but it's always nice to do it afterwards, as well, just to have it baked into the light is I suggest getting a white so so basically you record a dead piece of footage with like a piece of paper or ideally a white balance card this thing costs like seven bucks on Amazon get a white balance card you're gonna import some footage I usually do something with the white card and I'll do the medium gray that I do it in this footage I didn't because I didn't care because I can use the chair for my neutral gray But the first thing you're going to do is you want to set the white balance for your scene. I'm not going to show you how to do this in Resolve. I might as well. Set the white balance for your scene. It's this little color picker down here. Find somewhere on this white card that's pretty much even. Boom. That sets your white balance. You won't see a difference here because my camera is properly white balanced. But it helps if your camera is not white balanced. So if you do like actual shooting, not just in a static environment like a stream. And then I do a basic correct. And the basic correct, you want to bring up your scopes. And you're going to want to go to vector scope. And this thing is freaking awesome. And you're going to turn on 2x zoom, skin tone indicator, and show graphical. And basically, everything you're going to do, it's going to be hard, very hard to show this. Oh, wait, no, it doesn't, it doesn't do that. You don't even need to look at your... Uh, your thing here right now. Don't even bother looking at it right now. What I do is then you make a, another node in your color correct graph. You go to hue versus hue. If you click all of these buttons, I just don't have to save this. I'll click each of these buttons. We'll put a dot at each primary color. And then the thing you're going to do is you're going to line up so you see where the majority of the red is right here? You're gonna line that up with that little guide that is the R. You're gonna do the same thing for every color. Majority of the yellow is right here. They pale enough. There's not really a lot of green in this shot, but I'm gonna try to see with it. That's probably about right there. Blue goes right there. Or sorry, cyan. Blue goes there. Purple goes about there. And then we do that. And we can look at it. On, off. You can see that uh, the, the mint light in the background is the proper color, but my skin tones are seeing a bit, seeming a bit weird, right? Like those aren't, they're a little red. A little, little blotchy looking. Right? So, what you're gonna do 
I'm gonna clear this node. Let's reset node. Look at that pretty nebula. Yeah. So the thing I do for skin tones, and I will specifically pop them out, which is really cool and resolved because you can specifically focus skin tones and you don't have to worry about ruining the rest of your image. If you go to the qualifier range, you take the color picker and you grab your skin tone, right? So you'll see in the little the little preview window window right here. Oh, I just realized that I don't have mouse capture on. I'm sorry, I've been trying, meaning to do that. You'll see in this little window capture right here, you have like a, a, basically a mask of your skin tones. I'm gonna do clean white and it's gonna, it's basically a refinement of the mask. I'm kind of eyeballing it right now. We'll notice it more when we start color correcting. And I know for a fact this needs some blur, so we're gonna give it some blur. And we'll denoise it by about 50. Just to get rid of some of the noise and skin tone so you notice it a little bit less. It's gonna soften your image, but we can resharpen that afterwards in OBS with the sharpening plugin. And then the thing that I like to do is I will go over into my footage. I will go to the crop. I'm just gonna crop a section of my forehead, right? So I just had this section of my forehead cropped. That's all we're gonna see when we go back over here, right? We're still adjusting the whole image. It's just cropped down here. So this is all we see. And the reason we do this, where'd my scopes go? My scope disappeared. Did I close it on accident? Hold on. Yes, scopes. There we go. So the reason we turn on skin tone indicator is uh, this is where this little line right here that's going from the center out to about negative 35 degrees this is where skin tone should live it doesn't matter what color you are you can be black you can be asian you could be native american it doesn't matter your skin tones are gonna live along this line right here and what you can do is the what you do is you want to try to match up these skin this color frequency with this line which is why we crop it down so we don't see the rest of the image and then select specifically our skin tone so we're only adjusting up the these colors in our skin tones so if you have something similar in the background similar shade as your skin you don't have to worry about messing with that this is a thing that a lot of people don't use in their color correction and i don't know why because it's really easy to shade out. I, I, I mean, and I know why. It's because people get the blockiness and they're like, oh, well, uh, then it's not perfect. But you can fade that out with the blur option, the blur radius right here. So I'm just gonna expand this a little bit on our selection to get more of my skin tones, as you can see, because my arms aren't being captured. I think I can go all the way down on luminance. a little bit do a little bit more do a little bit more now we're grabbing the hair which i don't want to do right so i'm gonna go over to my hue versus saturation again i'm gonna get all five nodes but all we're real and that's just so we don't mess with other colors but all we're gonna do is adjust this To where this kind of meets up into the center. All right. Now I can go over here. I'm gonna clear this crop. And now our skin tones look much better. And that's how I equalize my skin tones. And then you do basic uh, saturation, contrast, bump those to what you think is desirable. I don't, don't do too much. You don't want to crush the blacks. And the best way to see if you're crushing blacks is if you go back over to video scopes, you change it to vector, not vector scope, uh, waveform. 
And this is a lot of color that you're looking at. You'll notice it kind of corresponds with everything you're seeing on your image. Like it follows the image. The, this spot where there's all this white is where the white card is, right? Um, this is basically your color data throughout across your entire scene. That's why when you crop down the image temporarily, you can pinpoint certain colors. It's really, really useful to do that. And this is just kind of, uh, this is learning and playing. I know what to do here because I've been color correcting since I was 15. I went to college for it. Looks like scanner cells. Yeah, so what I do generally is I will crunch the highs and the darks a little bit together and then equalize the mids to about the 60%. The so you see how it goes from 10, 1024 to zero. 60% um, would be 640. I try to keep the mid tones all in here. Reds are a little hot in this scene because I have red hair. Can't be helped. That's skin tones. And generally, if you shot right, you don't have anything going on down like below the line. You don't want to get anything below the line because once it's below the line, you lose all that data. The same goes for above the line. Once it's above the line, you lose that data. There's no saving it. You can overexpose for a shot. I'm actually pretty overexposed on the camera right now. I'm at like 80, 800 ISO. Realistically, I need to be at 40 or uh, 400, but it allows me to tone everything down in post. So I equalize all that. This is what it ends up with. And I just I just kind of bring the colors, especially the whites together so that they're around the 80, 90% mark. This could be a little bit better, but this was a fast grade. And then I will do a little bit of a final color pass on everything overall, just to bring these back down to around 90, bring the darks down a little bit so that we get a little bit more depth in the shadows, but it's not like bright white. And that's basic color signs. That's that's that is how I color grade my shit. All right, before we end the video, guys, I wanted to give you guys two more tips uh, that are kind of free to make you look better on camera in general. And you may be going like, well, you can't you can't you can't make this look better. There are ways that you can make yourself look better to a camera sensor or reduce the weird imperfections in your skin, uh, whether that be blemishes or just how porous your skin can be. Some people have very porous skin. Um, the big way to, the biggest way is uh, airspun foundation powder. Powder. Put some of this on your face. I don't care if you're a dude and you're like, oh, makeup. This will make you look better on camera. It will get rid of, it basically will get rid of the greasy and, uh, reflectiveness of like your oily skin and make everything a little bit more flat and just allow your, you you to not look so so shiny sometimes and then an eyebrow pencil and again dudes get over it makeup's awesome uh, especially when you're on camera all the time and you want the best quality po possible do your eyebrows make them pop after you've powdered your face because the eyebrows hold most of the face's expressions with the cheeks and the lips so uh, having these popping on on stream is super, super good for making you look better to your camera, thus making you look better to stream. Thank you, everybody, for watching today. If you enjoyed what I talked about in this little video, go check out the stream. I stream uh, Tuesday through Friday, usually over on the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash it's Cassie Joy, linked below. Go check out another one of my videos, maybe the NDI video. I will see you guys next week. Peace out.